Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to start a wedding blog. So this is everything we're going to cover today. What exactly is a wedding blog? How to pick a niche and niche down. In addition, I'm going to show you and tell you why you need something called web hosting. Next, I'm going to help you install WordPress. I'm going to help you install both a free and premium WordPress theme and show you changes you need to make to your website so that you can start writing. Also, I'm going to help you start writing. I'm going to help you find different ways to make money with your new website and why you need to share your content on social media. We're going to conclude this video with a brief discussion of about how many blog posts you should write before you determine if your website is a success or failure. Be sure to check out the three links in the description as I'll be referring to those three links throughout the duration of this video. All right, so first things first, what is a wedding blog? Now, a wedding blog is simply a blog where you answer questions about the wedding niche or the wedding space. It can be everything about perspectives from the groom side, the, the bride side, um, how to set up the perfect wedding, weddings indoors, weddings outdoors. There's just a lot that you could talk about. You could focus solely on wedding dresses and make a decent living. So what you will want to do is you will want to pick a niche within wedding and really focus on that niche. One way to help you pick a niche is to take a look at websites that are already having some success. For example, if we go over here to oncewed.com, they are creating content about bridal hairstyles. That's a niche of itself and wedding trends for the winter for this coming year. These are all different niches that you could get into. Another example is the website weddingchicks.com where again, they're creating content all about weddings. And what I recommend that you do is find a website that you like and that you want to improve or emulate and copy their domain name. And we'll talk about domain name in just a moment. And we're going to paste their domain name right over into a keyword research tool called Ahrefs. When you do that, you're going to see a list of the keywords that they rank for. So if we take a look at their organic keywords, they rank for over 100,000 keywords. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this here, and then we're going to get a large list. As you can see, these are all different types of niches that you could get into, country wedding, a uh, simple wedding ceremony. These are all things that people are asking and you're going to create blog content to help solve the problem. Now, because you have a brand new blog or website, what I recommend that you do is I recommend that you change the keyword difficulty to five or less. Now the keyword difficulty is a scale between zero and 100. The closer you get to 100, the more difficult it will be to rank for a new website. So if we look at this red themed wedding, this is a keyword difficulty of five and it gets over 2000 searches per month. We could copy this and we're going to come back to it later. So if we jump back over to our slide deck, now that we have picked a niche and we've niched down, the next step is to get your website on the internet. The only way for your website to appear on the internet is for it to be hosted somewhere. And when you click the first link in the description, you'll work with my number one recommended web hosting provider for beginners. Now the purpose of a web hosting provider is they are going to rent out hard drive space called a server so that your website can be seen on the internet. And in addition, when you click the first link in the description and you work with the uh, number one recommended web hosting provider, you'll get a domain name for free for the first year. A domain name is simply the name that your customers, your target audience is going to refer to your website by. For example, if we scroll up here, the domain name is onceweb.com and this domain name is weddingchicks.com. Now, what we're going to do at this point is I'm actually going to walk you through getting web hosting and getting a domain name through the first link in the description. It only takes about 10 minutes. I'm going to cover everything that you need. When you click that link, you'll be taken to this website where you'll go ahead and click get started. What I recommend is to click the first one on the far left, the basic plan, if you're just getting started with a website. As you can see, there are a number of options, but click that, click select, and then move on. Here, you're going to create a domain name. If you have one in mind, you can type it in here like you see that I do. What I recommend is try and find a domain name that's going to be related to your niche. Now, what I do is I type in a domain name that I know is already taken. When it's taken, you're going to get this error. What you can then do is go back and try different domains. Now, make sure again, you want to pick one that's related to your niche. Click next, and then you're going to see a green box that says that it's approved. The next step is simply to go through and enter in your contact information. Make sure that you, when you scroll down here, make sure that you leave all of the settings on. Um, but Again, enter in your contact information, the settings right here where it says domain privacy, leave all of this checked. If you don't leave it checked, you're going to get people reaching out to you, uh, spamming you, emailing you, trying to get you to sign up for web hosting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sign up and then jump back to you once I sign on and move to the next step. All right, so I have signed up and I'm going to go ahead and set up my website initially. 
just create a simple username and password, make sure it meets the requirements there, and then move on. Um, make sure that you write it down too. Write it down in a safe spot so that you have it and you remember it because it can be a pain to go ahead and get everything back. You're gonna have to enter in like some vital information, but just make sure that you write it down. It's really easy and really simple. Now, one thing that I do wanna note is that this part is not sped up at all. This is actual real time, and you can see that you'll go from absolutely nothing to a complete website in less than probably 10 minutes. And once you click submit, you're gonna move on to the next step where you get to log in. Here is where you're actually going to start creating your WordPress website. Now the great thing is, is Bluehost really does everything for you and it's really simple. So again, I'm not speeding this up at all and I want you to see what it really takes to create a website. Bluehost is gonna do a little bit of work in the background for you and we're just gonna actually click on skip this step. This one, first one I clicked on start a blog but for the next step just click skip because we know what we're doing and i'm actually going to tell you what to do so that we can get up and running click get started right here on the left hand side and then move on just click skip here and click skip here and then just pick the first one in the far left make sure that you're picking a free theme because they'll charge you they have both free and premium themes which i'll talk about in just a moment so right now it's actually creating your wordpress website in just a few moments, you're gonna click on log in to WordPress on the right hand side there, you'll see it in just a second. And then we can actually start looking at some basic configurations. All right, so we click log in, and now we actually have a WordPress website. What may need to happen is you may need to click refresh a few times to get it to, to work, but now we have our website as you can see. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna log in and delete a few plugins, because right now it has the coming soon and so if someone tried to get to your website at this moment, it's gonna say coming soon to them, even though we can see it. This is what your WordPress website looks like, but for everyone else outside of your network, it's gonna say coming soon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to plugins eventually, and we're going to delete some of the plugins that we don't need. Now I talk a little bit about plugins later on, but um, plugins add additional features and functionality. We are going to deactivate the Bluehost as well as the um, other plugins that are already activated and then we can go through and make the necessary changes which i'll cover in just a moment so we're going to deactivate them and then delete them now you want to make sure that you only have the plugins that you're using on your website the more plugins you have the slower your website's going to respond and, and function and you're going to lose out on ranking so make sure you have a lean setup very few plugins and then move on as you can see right now i'm just simply deleting some stuff that you don't need if you want to, you could keep them, but obviously if, if you're just getting started, you don't need this other stuff. What's more important is the themes that we're going to talk about in just a moment, as well as getting writing. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete, delete those, deactivate them, and then we're actually going to start moving on to settings, which you see right here. All right, so let's go ahead and make some changes that we absolutely have to make so that you can start getting traffic. The first thing that you want to do is you want to change your site title. Your site title is going to be the title of your website. You can make this basically your domain name. For example, my domain name is Web Hosting Rewind, and you can see that's my site title. And then the tagline is basically what your website's all about in a very succinct manner. As you can see here, mine says, get the latest news and info on all things web hosting. What you wanna do is make sure that yours is relevant to your niche. For example, if you are creating content about makeup, you can say, come here for the latest tips and tricks for all things makeup. Next, you wanna make sure that your WordPress address is HTTPS and not HTTP. Make sure your site address is HTTPS as well. And then the administration email should automatically be set. Um, uncheck the membership so that anyone can register. Make sure that this is unchecked. Um, if we scroll down here, you wanna change your time zone to your time zone. There are all sorts of them here. Next, you wanna make sure that you have your date format set to the way you want, and then go ahead and click save. If we go down to writing, there isn't anything in writing that we need to change. After that, we're gonna to go to reading. In reading, very important, you wanna make sure that your homepage displays to your latest post. That's the first thing. And the second one is you want to make sure that your search engine visibility is unchecked. Do not check this. Discourage search engines from indexing this site. You do not want this. Because if this is checked, people aren't going to be able to find your website. And everything that we do after this is going to be a waste. So go ahead and click save. This should be unchecked. Next, if we go down to discussion, there really isn't anything that we need to change here. 
media we can leave this as is and then permalinks is going to be really important right now your permalinks are set to plain you want to change it to post name this is done for search engine optimization what's going to happen is when we create a new blog post we are going to make it so that it's search engine optimized we're going to use the keyword in our title and that keyword is going to show up right here as well and this is called search engine optimization make sure that it's set to post name and then go ahead and click save and really that's everything that you need to do to make sure that you start getting traffic so now that we've installed wordpress we've installed a free theme i'm going to show you how to install a premium theme in just a second and we've made a few changes to your website now right now you have a free theme that free theme has no additional features or functionality it is pretty bland it is pretty boring however this is an example of a premium theme you see how this premium theme is more inviting it has custom fonts here's another example of a premium theme you see how it's set up a little bit different what i recommend that you do is go ahead and click the second link in the description and get yourself a premium theme the premium theme will have additional features and functionality you can do everything from here having a hero image to selling products right from your theme and when you get when you click the second link in the description type in wedding and you should be able to find a theme that you will like so i typed in wedding hit enter as you can see there are over 200 wedding wordpress themes that you can buy and download so what i recommend that you do is take a look find one that you like click this button here to add it to your cart check out and buy the theme once you buy the theme, you'll be able to download a zip file. Unpack that zip file and there will be a second zip file. You're going to take that second zip file and you are going to install it into the back office of your WordPress website. To do that, we're going to go down to appearance. We're going to click on themes. When you click on themes, you're going to click on add new and then you are going to click on upload theme. And when you click on upload theme, you can drag and drop that second zip file we found right here or you can choose to find it manually by clicking choose file. Next, you are going to click on install now and then activate. Once you do that, you are going to have a brand new looking website. The next step is to figure out how to start writing. Now, the three biggest questions I get when it comes to starting a brand new blog or website is how long should my blog post be? How do I start writing? And how many blog posts should I write? To answer those first two right now, to start writing, you're going to go to post and then you are going to click on add new. And when you click on add new, you are going to take the keyword that we found at the previous step. We're going to copy this and we are going to paste it into our title, red themed wedding. And the reason why we're doing it this way is to be picked up organically through the search engines. This is called search engine optimization. And the second part of our title is going to say every, everything you need to know. All right. And the second half is designed for the human element, our reader. We are creating the second half to entice our reader to click because we are providing them all the information that they need. And the next step is to figure out how to start writing. And to figure out how to start writing, we're simply going to copy our keyword. We're gonna jump back over to Google and we are going to paste this in and we just wanna see what our competitors are doing. If we scroll down here, we can see um, weddingwire.com. We're gonna open this up. Maybe that's a good example. We can also try the one below it as well. And we just want to get an idea of what our competitors are doing so that we can improve it. What you can do is you can take a look at the word count. Now the word count isn't a great indicator of ranking ability. You just want to make sure that you are creating content that is at least as long as something that is already ranking. Now, if I do a word count here, we're probably looking at about 2000 words. Let's see. Okay, so 1,400 words. So if you wrote a blog post that was at least 2,000 words, you could have some success. Now, what I recommend that you do is go through and skim this blog post and see if they missed anything. Is there important information that they did not add? You want to add that to your blog post. Now, speaking of blog posts, let's jump back over here. And to get started writing, what I recommend that you do is take about 10 or 15 minutes and do a brainstorming session. With the brainstorming session, you are simply going to write down six writing prompts. You're going to write down who, what, when, where, why, and how. And what you'll do is you'll take the 10 or 15 minutes and you'll ask yourself questions with regard to your keyword. So we could say, uh, when is the best time to have a red themed wedding? Why? 
you should not have a red themed wedding. Now, one thing that I want to point out is do not worry about your spelling when you're doing your brainstorming. Um, you want to make sure that you get down as many ideas as possible. You can always come back and fix the spelling later. But take about 15 minutes, get your, get your ideas down. And then once the 15 minutes is over, what you'll do is you'll delete the ones that aren't relevant to your blog post. And the ones that you keep, you are going to turn those into H2s. And then you are simply going to answer the question. And you're just going to do that over and over again until your blog post is complete. Once it is complete, you are going to click on publish. And then your blog post will be alive for the world to see, hear, read, and react to. The next step is to figure out how to make money. Now, there are a number of ways to make money with your new website. And one of the easiest ways to make money is right here in the middle of this page. This is a paid ad. This is an ad right here over to the right as well. This also down here is an ad, yet another ad. This web page is heavy with ads. And running ads on your website is actually really easy. And it's, you know, it's really hands off once you get everything set up. Now what you can do is you can work with this ad network, it's called Google AdSense. This ad network works with just about anybody and it's easy to set up. What you'll do is you'll click this blue button here, you'll go through the process of setting up ads on your website and ads will automatically be added to each new blog post that you upload so you won't have to worry about it. Now the only downside to Google AdSense is that you will make pennies on the dollar in the very beginning. You will not make much money at all. What I recommend that you do is once you start getting significant traffic, 1,000, 10,000 page views per month, you can work with other ad networks like Mediavine, uh, Media.net, Azoic, AdThrive. There's a bunch of them out there that you can work with to make even more money. Another way that you can make money is simply with affiliate marketing. Now with affiliate marketing, you are recommending or selling other people's products and services. Now the way that affiliate marketing works is you will find affiliate programs that are congruent or in line with your blog or website, you will apply and once you are accepted, they will give you unique URLs or affiliate links and you'll place them right into your website. Now the key to affiliate marketing is simply finding products that are congruent with your target audience. If your website is about weddings, depending on the niche that you choose, you can be an affiliate for Zales or you can be affiliate for a dress manufacturer. There are all types of affiliate programs out there. The knot.com is a pretty good affiliate program for the wedding niche. But the key is, is that you want to make sure you are promoting products that are in line or congruent. It would not make sense for you to promote something like underwater basket weaving here when they're talking about the webbing niche. Another way that you can make money is simply to sell your own physical and digital products. As you can see with this website here, they are selling all sorts of stuff. And it's actually really easy. If you found a WordPress theme that had the ability to sell stuff, your life is much easier. Now selling your own physical or digital products is outside the scope of this video, but that is an opportunity as well. The next step is to share your content on social media. Now, in my opinion, I recommend that you share every new blog post on social media because Google is not going to send you traffic immediately. It will take some time before you start getting organic traffic. And one way to help speed up the process is to go out and upload your content on social media. Now, the key to sharing your post on social media is to make sure that you share the post where your target audience is actually at. For example, if you are creating content about weddings, maybe go find a wedding Facebook group or TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and share your content there. Just like the affiliate marketing example, don't share your wedding blog to people that are interested in underwater basket weaving. You are going to have very few clicks. The last question that I get the most is how many blog posts should I write? Now, this is a personal opinion, but I think your goal should be 50 blog posts. Now, 50 blog posts is a really good number because you will set yourself apart from many other websites out there that start and then stop. In addition, you are going to have 50 blog posts out with 50 keywords that will give yourself an opportunity to rank for keywords. You're going to get better at writing. You're going to get better at keyword research. And Google is going to provide you with a little bit more trust because you're not just a flash in the pan. Now be sure to check out the three links in the description. The first one is for web hosting. The second one is for a premium WordPress theme. And the third one is for a free affiliate marketing course. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell if this video or any other video on the channel helped you out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.